You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, founder and chief automation officer of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. In this episode, I have Brittany Basso, the chief operating officer of the Y Institute. And her why is to make a positive impact on the lives of others. How she does it is by making sense out of the complex. What she brings is a simple way to help others move forward in an efficient and effective pattern. I had the opportunity of meeting Brittany at the very early stages of her career at the Y Institute and to see the growth that she's done in such a small amount of time, a short amount of time, I thought that she would be a perfect candidate for those of you who are listening and just wondering what does entry and an ongoing career look like for somebody who is you know, aspiring to get into the space? Uh, maybe you don't want to book a client. So maybe you want to work with a budding startup. Right. You want that excitement and, and growth and, and ability to impact the operations. Brittany has done it all. So what I did in this podcast is I documented her journey of starting the career, what success looked like, what challenges she faced, as well as how she approached automation in the beginning and where she's at now. So I believe this episode is fully comprehensive to give you insight on how to how to set the proper expectations if you're looking to establish or start a career in the space of automation. So before we get into the episode, if you're new to the podcast, make sure that you listen to this episode in its entirety. At the end, I will make an invitation for you to join the family of listeners and subscribe. Okay, if you are a listener and you're not subscribed, you can subscribe to the All Systems Go podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're on YouTube. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Please, if you have not, leave a five star rating and review. It would be greatly appreciated. So let's jump into this episode with Brittany and let her detail her journey and her success uh, and, and with her career with the Y Institute. Brittany, welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm glad to have you on. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Chris? Well, you know, given the time of recording, I'm still looking at snow outside of my window. And when there is no snow, I'll be doing even better. So um, (laughs) no complaints, but patiently waiting. That's that's wonderful. I can say I don't have snow at my window (laughs) and I'm enjoying the weather here in Austin. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Good old Austin. Well, 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 Brittany, I wanted to. Of course, give give people insight on your journey. Oftentimes, you you know, Brittany, oftentimes I feel like people jump so far to the end that they don't take the time to really document document the humble beginnings and the processes in between. Right. There's, you know, in on a, in a chase to get to 10 million or one million dollars, there's a lot of victories. <laughs> in between that and on the way. And I want to highlight that at, in terms of a career in the in the um, digital marketing and automation space. And, and you came to mind. So tell our listeners, give them a little bit of your backstory um, personally and professionally. Yeah. OK, I'd be happy to um, kind of in the personal realm, which kind of transpires into the professional realm, I um, lived in Colorado for um, the past 21 years um, and then just recently moved out to Austin, Texas, mm-hmm. where I've explored um, a new kind of career with a new company, but um, loved 
growing up in Colorado and grew up in a, the mountain town where there was a bunch of events and hospitality was super huge mm. and got involved in that industry pretty heavily, um, just within events, marketing the events, putting on the events, making sure they go well, and um, just a lot of the hospitality business. So I yeah. focused a lot of my attention in that direction for quite a few years. Is that, and, was that um, after high school? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yep. After high school, through college, and a little bit of after college. Okay. Okay. Um, and then within that, just kind of figured out what I really love within the event industry was the operation side of it. I think mm. the fun design is awesome and you get to try new food and all this stuff. But what I really loved was the operations and the efficiency within it. Yeah. Um, and then within that, got an opportunity to jump on with a startup company and kind of help them get their processes and operations in line to be um, more efficient and more effective. And I'm still with that company um, as of now, and we're growing and there's a lot of big, great growth goals that we've reached. And then yeah. there's a lot of growing pains that we've had along the way. Absolutely. You know, one of, one of the things that you mentioned um, that, that leads me to believe that you're naturally an introspective person is you, you said you identified the things that you liked in mm -hmm. the hospitality industry. And it's a conversation that I have often with my kids. And I tell them, I said, every event, every situation that you go through in life and deal with is teaching you about you. So mm -hmm. take inventory on what did you like about that? What did you not like about that? So that when you go into the next event, the next relationship, the next circumstance, you're better informed and you're closer, right? You're closer to that sweet spot. So what what did that look like? You're in hospitality. Anybody could have planted their flag and just said, hey, this is me. So what was that that really caused you or what it was there at a particular event or a feeling or you know any circum anything that had you do that reflection and say hmm what is it about this that I like and that I don't yeah that's a really good question um I think it was primarily when I was in those situations in particular whether it was a golf tournament a wedding um mm -hmm. a nonprofit gala whatever it was I enjoyed being able to contribute to the event as a whole. Um, so other people could come in and have a good time together and create and foster that intention of community mm -hmm. um, and growth within that event. And that was really great. Um, but then kind of where my energy would come from and all of my excitement would grow is and my focus was, okay, this event has to go well, this, um, whatever it might be has to like run efficiently and effectively mm -hmm. to produce that, um, wonderful experience or that depth of community within it, or you met your goals of fundraising or profit or whatever it might be, yeah. um, sticking to the budget, all of those things, once all those lined up, then I could see that that community was being fostered and all those other like heartwarming pieces of it. I was like, oh, this is so great. But without the operational side of it, working efficiently and effectively, mm. that, sa that same like heartwarming reward wouldn't have um, come because the operations were would be kind of a bust. Yeah, um, yeah. That was kind of what I pinpointed as where I wanted to be. Yeah, you you were you wanted that experience. You did you wanted to ensure the experience was was actualized, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's what made you really look and say, "Okay, what is it that's make that's doing it?" You know, it's the operation side and um I I feel like I had a similar experience when I was a consultant coming up with web development and design and you know, I'm designing and building websites and it's just like what makes the really good websites good? And it wasn't all of the fancy stuff on the front end and design. It was the back end automation. So I said, that's it. That's what I want. Um, and I want to highlight that because some people, they try to get it right, Brittany, right out the gate. They say, hey, this is what I want to do and I'm going to be great at it. And you may be great at it, but it may inform you of a particular way that you should be operating or 
um, you know, in expose you to 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 something else. So now you're with uh, Y Institute. Tell us a little bit about Y Institute and what attracted you to the company. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Y Institute as a whole is a startup um, company that focuses on personal growth and development. And it's all about the brain biology and how you process mm. the world. And we discover your why. Um, we have a online discovery where, you, and it's an assessment that only takes five minutes. And you can kind of discover your why, which is basically the lens, the emotional lens in which you view the world and retain information. Mm -hmm. um, there's nine different whys, and everyone has one. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of differentiates you from that question of like, oh my gosh, why does this person do what they do? Why do they view the world in that lens? I don't yeah. understand. And this kind of hones in on why the why. Yeah. Uh, and we have a couple other workshops and programs that go along with that. Um, and our, we're just kind of getting our feet on the ground and figuring out what that looks like and yeah. growth and development within that industry. Um, and what kind of drew me in originally was just the opportunity to not only learn more about how our brains work and our, how our brains are wired, um, but also how that will help social structures and community growth um, in the future, being able to know each other's um, mm. why and know each other's lens in which we view the world. And you're able to kind of just understand people on a deeper level um, and be able to get there emotionally and mentally and conversationally um, and be able to put yourself in their shoes and yeah, see that. Yeah. And, and have more, more meaningful uh, purposeful relationships and engagements. Um, I will say, I, I, you know, I met Gary, Gary Sanchez. He's the, uh, the founder of it. Um, and I was given a presentation and he had me take the assessment in, on one of our breaks and I mean, it was spot on. It was spot on. He read the results to me right there, you know, on, on the spot. And then he also told me some things to be mindful of and everything. I don't know if I shared this with Gary, but Brittany do so. Um, everything that he said uh, to be mindful of and this is what you need to thrive. And if it's taken away from you, this is what's going to happen. It was like he foretold the future within about a month or so. Those things I identify, I said, oh, this is what Gary said. And things started to take a turn for the left. And I've, I've, I've take that as a gift of him in preparation for me, even though I did not realize that it was coming. And I think that's the that's the biggest part about why Institute and what you all do is you don't know. You don't know what relationship you're about to enter in, what opportunity. And if you don't know your why, you're not clear on that. You're at a disadvantage, right? You're at a gross disadvantage um, of how to navigate it healthily, right? And, and, and to, uh, to a mutual benefit of, of for, for both parties. Yeah, absolutely. Being able to not only understand yourself and how your brain is naturally wired to mm -hmm receive information um and then how you can best utilize that um that being able to understand that about yourself will help you go far um and the next layer is being able to understand how others are wired and how you can help others be put on a platform to grow and flourish within their strengths even if they look different from yours mm -hmm. um, and it just helps you kind of speak why to why is what we like to say. Um, yeah. Rather than putting yourself in their shoes, you can speak why to why and understand what's going on in their brain, which is incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's great. So um, for you, I know when we first got connected, uh, you started with the Y Institute in a different position that you're in now. So tell me about your start, that position, the position you are in now and what led to that growth. Yeah. Um, my current role is chief operating officer. So I've been able to grow within the company to kind of that C-suite level, which has been a huge growth. Um, mm -hmm. Started off with doing their event planning, their virtual events, um, just kind of with my background in event planning, mm -hmm. as well as assisting, um, being the executive assistant to our CEO, Gary. Um, and from there, just 
kind of got in deep, um, figured out operationally how things were working and how things were growing, and then had the opportunity to of an open position and an open role of COO and um, was offered the opportunity to kind of snatch it up and take um, charge in it and see where it led. And it's been an incredible journey so far um, and has opened the doors to more automation, more marketing, more HR, a whole spectrum of uh, yeah. new opportunities. So, so Brittany, how did you battle those mental demons that told you, oh, that COO, that's a big position. You've got to have all of these qualifications. And I don't know if you're ready for that. How, how did you navigate that and say, you know what, I'm going for it anyway? Yeah, that those definitely came up um, quite often. <laughs> and I think it was more of I'm going to put in 110% of my effort and I'm going mm. to give it the best of my best and in hopes that that's enough and also just be ready to learn. I know that I don't know enough and I know that I'll will always be learning. So if there's something that comes up that I don't know, I'll kind of just dive in and do some research on it um, and put in those extra hours of growth um, to learn and develop within these areas and get multiple perspectives and call out on like different mentors in different industries for um, advice and growth. Um, and so kind of approaching it with that mindset and knowing that I don't know it all and that's okay. Um, yeah. you know, there's other um, individuals that are really strong in these areas and I can um, reach out to them and learn from them. Yeah. I love it. You, you didn't let, I don't know, be, be a competitor. Right. Like it's like, hey, uh, I, I don't I don't want to embrace you. You know, you're the enemy. Right. Um, you embraced it. And, and I always tell people I don't know is is are some of the three strongest words anybody could ever say. It takes a level of self-confidence, self-awareness, self-assurance and just honesty to say, you know, hey, I don't know that doesn't mean I can't figure it out. Doesn't mean I can't be resourceful in helping you figure it out or even figure out a better solution than what's in place. But as of right now, I don't know, <laughs> you know, it yeah. opens up right uh, uh, a door to authentic growth, you know. Yes. And that's something that I think as a leader that Gary and then other individuals in our company are really um, encouraging of, they always say, if you don't know, that's okay. And we'll dive in deeper and we can figure this out together, or we'll give you more time to figure it out. Um, and we kind of establish that same role within our entire company, um, within different projects and people in different roles. If you don't know, that's okay. We're all in this learning process together and we're all going to be learning for the rest of our lives. Um, so that is an appropriate answer and one that we're welcoming to receive. Um, so I think that's also kind of where those thoughts kind of got squashed a little bit more because I was open to that idea of it's okay not to know the answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And you can't, um, we can't bypass or, you know, easily overlook the culture, right? That is created and, and, and garnered and nurtured um, in the company. All right, let's, let's make a shift. I hope that was fruitful uh, and helpful for you all looking at, well, what, what does it look like? How do I get acclimated? What, what can I be, what should I be aware of? Um, let's talk a little bit of the techie stuff here, Brittany. Um, let's, let's focus to, to automation. And, and here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking about. Just as your role changed when you started and where you're at now, the automation needs probably have done the same, right? So, <laughs> so speak to the preliminary needs of automation and then some of the things that you all are relying on automation to do for you now. Yeah, automation is incredible and opens the door for exponential success is something that I've really honed in on um, and appreciate. And um, I know originally when we started talking, Chris, you kind of opened that door and that kind of like blinder for me of being like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. The extent it can go um, with automation opens up so many doors. So I appreciated that. Um, but for Y Institute in particular, I feel like we were kind of playing more 
on the defense. Things were just kind of coming at us and we had to just kind of catch up. Everything was a catch up, catch up. And we were never able to like be moving forward and be on the like offense and being proactive. We were kind of just reactive to everything that was happening. Um, And through different processes of automation, then we could be on the um, active and kind of being more proactive with what we wanted to do and the goal growth goals that we wanted to reach, we could actually start to put our hands down and heads de- heads together um, and achieve those goals when automation was taking place in the background of things we already had in going and in system. Um, so I think that's been the biggest shift of if we know how to work within all everything we have automated and we know how to edit and maneuver and fix little things, um, to make sure it's working at the highest capacity, we're able to kind of let that go and run its course while working on different areas to develop um, mm-hmm. and huge. Yeah, it's, it's shoring up those areas with systems, right, to to get your footing in stability so that you're not so focused on dodging and defending that you can actually start moving forward in a, in a proactive nature. So the, the majority of uh, the automation, the the systems that you all put in place, automated systems, was the initial implementation around events or were there other areas that, that needed more automation? Yeah. Originally, my focus was within events. Um, okay. And that's kind of where the door of automation opened up for Y Institute. Yep. Yep. We did have um, some stuff that was automated, but it was all through an external company. Um, mm. And so we didn't have much control over it or ability to kind of change things up pretty easily and quickly. Yeah. Um and things were kind of set in stone and it was a process to get things changed. So when I took over the event um, part of it, there's a lot of automation and discovery that I was trying to put into place. Um, and once we brought kind of more of our marketing internal toward to Y Institute and changed up our CRM system a lot, um, yeah. Now we have the ability to automate all of our systems within events, within marketing, within um, email automation, website development, all those things. And it was just took that opportunity of bringing it in house, taking on that new um, development and learning the depths of it Mm -hmm. so we could really grow and succeed from it. Um, yeah. but it did start with events first and then it transpired into, oh my gosh, this opened so many more doors with us. Yeah. And given, given your process oriented nature, you know, like you being in the operations, you're no stranger to process. In fact, one could, one may easily always find Brittany leaning more towards processes than anything else, right? Like thinking through, okay, how is this working? How are we doing it? Is it efficient? Um, what, what were, if, when we look at the implementation of it, were you able to easily identify within the process where you could integrate automation or, or was that more of a discovery as well? The more you brought the the marketing in house. Yeah, I think it was a quick discovery. Um, so I think there's like some blinders you have up to what is automated. Um, and what could be automated. But when you start to see those gaps of disconnect, it's kind of like, okay, we don't really need that to be disconnect. If we only had a way to automate that, there would be no disconnect. So we would be able to connect with our clients on a deeper level and continue to develop and foster that relationship with them if these few steps were automated. And then it's more of, okay, let's discover what resource we can use to automate those steps. And then once those pieces are automated, you start to see other gaps in different areas. (laughs) And when you see those gaps, rather than filling them with um, people who can be like inconsistent or things that might not um, line up always, it's automation filling in those gaps Um, and automation that people can develop and grow within. Um, Because you can automate it and then you'll see, oh, that wasn't really what we wanted to automate it to. So you just kind of go back there and you fix it a little. Yep. Yep. It's, it's this, uh, it's a living thing, you know, like automation is not 
a destination or a box that you check, because as you mentioned, you have your target, right? Like let's automate this thing and we should be good. And then you automate it and then you see others. <laughs> it's like, okay, now that this is in place, let's do this and let's do that. All the while you're also revisiting the systems in place because there may be an experience that has changed a bit. Uh, maybe something further on is like, oh, cause, cause automation produces an output. So now we're, you know, we're looking at the output and saying, well, let's improve this output. Let's look at the input. What is that system that's feeding it to us? And it becomes this dynamic thing that the power is understanding the processes because that allows you to easily go to every area and identify exactly where to focus on and, and, and optimize. So I know that comes natural to you, but it's one of those things I want to highlight um, because if you're if you skip the power of process and just go straight into the technology and try to automate, you're going to over automate and then you're not going to be able to identify where did we go wrong? <laughs> right. Like, where do we go wrong? How to fix it and how to how to be better? It's a it's a very tough road, you know. Yes, definitely. It can definitely be a tough road. I think you hit something, though, too, of how can we better it when something's set in place? Is it working? How can we better that down the road? And that's something that we have individuals on our team who are really good at focusing in on that. My brain definitely thinks processes, once the process is set up and it's yeah. run through automation, yeah. uh, I'm quick to jump to the next gap and continue to move forward. But uh, we have individuals on our team who are really strong at looking back and being like, okay, but what about bettering this a little bit more? what isn't necessarily a gap, but could be made better. Mm -hmm. um, and that's super helpful to have kind of that balance of the focus of, yes, we can automate it, but make sure to go back and figure out what were those gaps that we automated that we can grow within and better. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So right now, uh, all the projects that you have in balance, all of the new opportunities, team growth, um, all of those things in place, what excites you at this moment? Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> I think what always excites me is the ability to contribute to a greater good. Mm -hmm. um, so with all these projects and things going on um, in the day to day, it's kind of the overarching idea of this is going to contribute to the greater good of those who discover their why. This is going to yeah. contribute to the greater good of our YOS certified professionals and their user experience or client user experience and yeah. um, bettering and automating those will overall better people's ability to process the world, understand their emotions, be able to move forward quicker and we can empower them to be individually um, original to themselves because mm -hmm. they're wired in such a beautiful way and being able to understand your wiring is so much more helpful to be able to take that step. So. With all of it going on, I think it really is to um, contribute to multiple facets of what's going on. That's beautiful. It's 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 moving, pushing the vision forward, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, yeah. the purpose that the the company exists, the culture is created, and the people that it will impact. And those are the people you want at C level, right? You don't want <laughs> somebody at the C suite that's like, look, I just want to make money. How do we get more and more customers? Money, money, money. It's like you want somebody that encompasses the culture, the vision as well, so that their their uh, recommendations, their their strategies, and their management and leadership is in line with the vision and not just a pro production. You know, um, yeah. so so that's great. I'm I'm glad you shared that. And what does I know you mentioned day to day give people insight because there, Brittany, I cannot, I can't count how many people now I've been in the startup space for a while, remote working and all of those things. So it's very clear to me what I'm not shocked at an average day to day or, you know, I've got a f very well um, expectation of it and idea of it across the board. What does an average day look like to you? What, you, you know, from the your workspace to the time you're waking up? Are you are you Zoom attired where you your top right and bottom pajamas? Like what is the the, <laughs> the average day to day for you as the COO for Y Institute? Yeah, that's a I was thinking about this question a little bit before. <laughs> uh, 
Because I feel like the day to day usually looks a little bit different. Yep. Um, yep. Each yep. day, I think um, kind of getting up early and going through those morning routines that kind of get your mindset um, in the right headspace and mm -hmm. uh, fuel up. And then kind of the first thing I typically do, honestly, is just jump in to emails and see what needs to be addressed really quickly. If there's anything kind of urgent, what buyers, if any, need to be put out um, okay. from the end of the day or overnight. We work with um, our India team. They're our tech team. So a lot of stuff kind of happens overnight, which is great. Um, but yeah. sometimes that means first thing in the morning, you jump on and you kind of address those um, questions or do some development work there. Um, and then from there, there's usually uh, quite a few meetings throughout the day okay. um, with a lot of project management, um, whether those, it's- Are you guys doing your meetings like via Zoom or? Yes, we okay. are. Um, yeah, well, we've done our quarterly meetings in person, which is good because it's like a two day long thing. Okay. Um, I think I'd be pretty Zoomed out after two days of eight to <laughs> 10 hours on Zoom. Um, but I've definitely experienced those days here and there still with uh, meetings with the marketing team and our tech team in India, our seaboard. Um, and we're just kind of able to bounce around ideas, go through projects, looks at the depths of them, the whole scale of them. Um, and then being able to support those teams um, with what they need to be able to move forward and finish their projects successfully. Um, and then outside of that, it's just kind of working on the ongoing projects that we have, yeah. um, whether that is in tech or in marketing or anywhere else. It's continuing to develop, develop in those areas. OK. And and do you or do you have more of a fluid schedule? Are you, you know, hey, at this time I'm logged off for the evening. If you need me, is it more open where you kind of come and go as you need to throughout the day? What, what does that look like for you? Yeah, there is. Um, a lot of flexibility within my schedule, which is very nice um, outside of like our weekly, monthly, biweekly meetings. Yep. Um, and so with that flexibility, using my time to the greatest capacity of when I do have maybe a slower point in the day, what can I get done in my life outside of work um, yeah. to be more productive? Because sometimes things do come up and it will be on conference calls or in meetings or finishing up a project deadline that has just gotten too close um, mm. and helping out with that team. And it'll be a couple of later nights of working and being able to set aside those couple of late nights to work and help these teams meet their deadlines um, is something that I know is happens every once in a while. So using the slower times to be able to kind of get everything else in order um, yeah. when the approach. So it does just change just based off of kind of the projects that are in place and what else going on. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. No, I, I, I can't thank you enough just for providing the insight. Cause again, I've got uh, for this episode in mind, I just wanted to highlight the the other side right we talk about clients and all of the hey big bucks i just landed a six figure all of that right but then there's this space where you can come in and make an impact right a strong impact with for a business and, and by implementing the the systems and having a process oriented approach and, and and really leveraging automation and it could be very dynamic your day to day, you know, have purpose in the work that you do uh, and, and really be a, be a great career. So what advice if if you could just go back to that young Brittany, what advice would you give to the aspiring marketers listening to this podcast who maybe they they don't have uh, that much experience after high school or, or, or any time in life, but they, they have been trying to figure out how, how would I get into this space, right? Like how do I get change from, you know, corporate or maybe just day to day stuff like while I'm working at Walmart, whatever the case is, what advice would you give them to making that, that transition or that entry into, into a space like this? Yeah, I think, um, one of the things that I really appreciated was um, why Institute, they're like, we're going to take a chance on you. We're going to like mm. give you the position. This is kind of in your realm and let's see how you do. Um, 
So kind of jumping on those opportunities of the idea of someone taking a chance on you and being like, I'm going to prove to you that that was a chance well taken. I'm so thankful for this opportunity and let me give 110% to everything I can, everything you've given me and open doors for me to do um, and continue to learn and develop in those areas. Um, And once I was able to do that, they kind of see like, okay, like you're in this role now, but you've proved to us that you can do X, Y, Z through this and you're growing in these areas. What if we gave you a little bit more? What if we changed it up a little bit like this and saying yes to those opportunities, even if there's an unknown and you're kind of sitting there Googling what they're asking at the same time, (laughs) they're like, cool, I think I could figure that out. Um, And just kind of saying yes to people taking a chance on you. And through that, you'll learn different things you like and you don't like through that yes and no. Um, And then down the road, you're able to be like, I don't know if this is necessarily where I thrive best. Maybe we could look at putting someone in this role specifically, but this area and this realm, I'm all about. I eat up. This is great. Um, And then you're able to grow in that way. And as you say yes, you'll figure out what you need to say no to in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, But there's so much unknown that you just continue to learn within each role. Um, and you'll learn things you love, then you'll learn things that maybe aren't your cup of tea. Yeah. But through that, yes, you'll continue to grow. And it shows a idea and um, taking responsibility and taking action, I think. I love it. It it actually I, I may have jumped over this part, but you brought it to my to my mind as you were answering this. How did you how did you find why you institute? Why is it? How did they find you? I guess it could go either way, right? Yeah, it was actually through um, a friend connection. One of my friends from Colorado, her dad is Gary Sanchez, our CEO. And I had, when my friend and I were close um, in college, I had held a couple leadership roles within our sorority. Um, Mm. And so through like dad's weekends and homecomings and all these things, we, um, just all of our parents got to hang out. We all got to meet and um, Gary had this position open up and he was talking to his daughter and he was like, I need someone who takes action and wants yeah. to dive in. Oh, He's like, what's Britt up to? And so from that, it just kind of, he took a chance on me and Love the door it. opened up. I'm so glad you answered the way that you did uh, because it speaks to how you're Right now, you're training the market. You have a brand right now. You know, you you don't have to worry. Oh, well, I don't have a logo. No, your personal brand is speaking for you. It is on display for everybody that that you engage with and those who are tangential, right, to those who you directly engage with. And for you to come on top of mind from leadership and a capacity that you are operating in in college, right? And you would have never drawn the connection like, okay, let me get in this leadership position because in two to three years, somebody's going to be looking for, (laughs) you know, there was no way. Um, But showing up, right? Showing up and and just being your authentic self, uh, taking life by the horn and saying, look, I don't know, I'm going to figure it out. You just never know who's paying attention and who will bring you up, you know, in a conversation. Yes, that is, it's very true. You never know. <laughs> it, was, it definitely <laughs> caught me off guard, but I'm very thankful for this opportunity that I've had so far. Yeah. And and as as long as when that conversation comes up, it's always in your favor. You're doing the right thing, <laughs> right? Because it can't go the other way. So um, that was that was great. So in closing, uh, this has been great, by the way, Brittany, I, I appreciate it. Um, in closing, if you think about all of the systems that you all had in place. And I remember uh, when we first met, we were looking at CRMs and going through that process and you you all landed on one that was the best fit for you. Um, if you think about just the, your holistic uh, time there, um, your time there holistically, what what would you say um, is, is the one system that you have in place that you're most proud of? Yeah, I think... Um our biggest transition was we changed our CRM program completely. Um, We flipped from one that was not um, really compatible with what we were doing at the time. And 
within a two week span, we just flipped to the other. Um, and we were able to dive in deep, know exactly how to use it, where to use it, how to teach others, how to use it. Um, look at all of our data, the KPIs, all of our stats, and all of a sudden we're able to read everything and develop within things and continue to learn new things. Um, so I would think, I think that like two week transition of that chaos, a lot of late nights within those two weeks, <laughs> um, re- rebuilding everything that we had already yeah. built um, and continuing to grow on that build, like our build, um, that was a huge transition. And now being in this new CRM system has um, completely opened up a numerous amount of doors um, for us because we have that ability to be uh, proactive rather than reactive now. Yeah, I love it because the the tools that you use are important, right? You all started with your processes and your operations and that informed you. Hmm maybe this is not the best tool for us instead of being locked in saying, no, we have to figure out how to make this tool work. And when you are able to break free from, from the technological prison that most people are in, because they think it is the tool and it's like, no, it's, it's you (laughs) and now you leverage it, your strategy, your operations. Um, It is, it's amazing how the right tool decision can, can really change things for your business and allow you to to operate at a at a higher capacity more effectively and efficiently so all right well Brittany, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast sharing your knowledge your experience and insight where can people go to find out more about why institute yeah well thank you first chris for having me on this has been a wonderful experience and um everything you've taught me thus far um has opened up my eyes to even more automation that we haven't even put in place yet. Not all of it. And so yeah. what you do is incredible. So thank you for yes, everything. Thank you. you. Um, and then for Y Institute, if you just go to whyinstitute.com, you'll see um, everything we do as a company, um, as well as be able to see who else is on our team, be able to meet the team, take the Y discovery for yourself if you want to, Um, as well as learn about other programs we have for teams and businesses um, and certifications you can get through Y Institute. Great. Well, I'll tell you, um, when I first met Gary, he had the assessment, he had some private clients and the program was an idea. So within a few years to see it where it is now, you guys have program certification. The team is growing um, hats off and, and, and know that I'm, I'm cheering from afar uh, for you all's continued success. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so thanks for being on, Brittany. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thanks for having me on, Chris. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope Brittany's expertise, her journey, her story I hope it was insightful. And and I know that there's a lot of little nuggets that you can always extract in between the words and the story. But I hope I did a well enough job to help you uh, to help pull out some of those nuggets so you didn't have to dig too deep. Um, You know, as I mentioned in the podcast, my entry into this this technology space and startup space is very similar to hers where, you, you know, you get an opportunity and you answer the call. You answer the call. I can't stress enough for wherever you're at right now, as long as you're showing up, giving 100 percent, 110 percent where you're at to give people a reason to think of you, to bring your name up when the opportunity comes. So who is the person that needed to hear this episode? Share this with that friend, that budding digital marketer, uh, that CEO that's looking to hire people. Maybe there's a conversation that you can have with your family and see who's whose name pops up. And for that digital marketer, make sure your name (laughs) is worthy and your work and your approach and your integrity is worthy of popping up in those conversations. So share this with them to help give them a better uh, set, a better expectation, a more accurate expectation and a more accurate approach to beginning their career in this marketing technology space where startups of many varieties are in need, in need of process oriented uh, folks that would be willing to and capable of installing automated systems here at automation bridge. We're dedicated to training digital marketing professionals like Brittany on this episode to become automation service providers. I tell you, uh, 
the difference between a digital marketing and automation service provider is the provision of service of automation. There is a, a, a way that it is done and should be done and adhere to that you will not find easily online. OK, so small businesses, they're in dire need of these people with the ability to take strategy and marketing technology, put them together for the responsible deployment of automated systems for rapid growth. If that's you, if when I mention this or there's something about this, this podcast just resonated with you differently, you see things clearer, you're more excited. The hair on your arms is standing up a bit. You're the sun is shining a bit brighter. I want to invite you. I want to invite you to be considered to join our next group uh, for our next program of auto, of training automation service providers. And you can do that if you go to automationbridge.com forward slash ASP. That's ASP for automation service provider. But automationbridge.com forward slash ASP and take the next steps for us to assess your fit. Let's see. Let's see if what you're feeling is accurate. Um, we'll be able to tell you yes or no. And if it's a yes, we've got a great program. We've got community. We've got all the resources you need to get started, not just the right way, but expeditiously. We want to shorten your learning curve so that the impact that you heard that Brittany is making on her business, that you can have that same impact on someone else or your business. OK, the need is great and the time is now, everybody. So don't hesitate if this is you in any capacity, automationbridge.com forward slash ASP um, for my new listeners. This is the time. Welcome. This is my formal w invitation to you. Join the family of listeners. Come on. Join the automation. The all systems go uh, podcast family. Every every Thursday, a new episode is released. Now is the time to subscribe. Hit a five star rating and leave your review. It is greatly appreciated. If you know a guest that you would like to appear on this podcast or you would like for me to have on this podcast that you know would provide value to our listeners and the audience as a whole of people looking to leverage and use automation to scale their business, please submit your information or their information at automationbridge.com forward slash guest automationbridge.com forward slash guest. We are taking, we are taking people. Uh, we're taking applications to be on the all systems go podcast. All right. All show notes and podcasts are accessible at automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. You can subscribe there. And of course, listen to any episode that you missed uh, at your leisure. So until next time, I see you online. Automate responsibly, my friends.